Welcome, fellow freaks, geeks, and nostalgic 90s nerds to my channel, Slime and Slashers, where, yeah, we talk about everything from Nickelodeon slime to horror movie slashers, but plenty of stuff in between, like today's video, which is a book recommendation video. Not just any book recommendation video, it is a Halloween-ish book recommendation video. So I'll be talking about books that I think are perfect books to read for the spooky season. So stay right where you are, buckle in, and join me after this short intro to discuss some fun thematic books. Welcome back guys! I am sorry, I feel a little disheveled and I'm still dealing with COVID so this is like my 8th or ninth day with symptoms and I still am testing positive. So I tested positive about a week ago officially and I'm still positive as of today so that kind of sucks and I'm not feeling the best today but I wanted to record this video because I was super excited about this. So, like I said in the intro, I am definitely going to be giving you guys some fun suggestions. Some of these suggestions are books that are set in fall. Some of these suggestions are books that have something Halloween related featured in the story. Some of these are middle grade reads. Others are adult reads. Some of these aren't even horror books. And one particular book is a nonfiction book. So without further ado, let's dive in and discuss the specifics. My first recommendation is a book that deserves a lot more attention. And luckily over this past year, I hope I've had some kind of influence in this, but this has gained a little bit more attention, I think in the last year. But I'm not saying it's all due to me, but I did tout this book a lot this year, and that's for a good reason. This is a wonderful slasher story, but it's not your typical slasher story. So a big criticism of slasher books is that, you know, it's kind of mindless, it's kind of just slash and bash, and no real plot, no real great characters. This one is different though, Taste Like Candy by Ivy Tholen. It is wonderful in that the characters that we're following one, Ivy Tholen takes time for us to get to know these characters, so we actually get connected to them and we care about their safety and we don't want them to get slashed. Whereas you think about a typical slasher movie or a lot of slasher books, a lot of times there are characters that you want to see get slashed and that you don't mind because the characters are annoying. This is the opposite in this book. We are following a group of girls and they're all very highly educated, they're very talented, some are musicians, some are great athletes, they all get great grades, and they're all trying to get into college, and there's a lot of stress around that. So they're high school, about to go into senior year type of grade level, and they're going to be going on a scavenger hunt, which is a tradition of the school. And this particular year, the scavenger hunt is going to be set at a Halloween carnival. So that's where the Halloween theme comes in. Now, the first half of the book, like I said, we spend some time getting to know the characters, but when the slashing takes place, then we get that whole Halloween carnival setting, and it really dives deep into that. And there's some really unique kills that make this a wonderful slasher, like above and beyond the character development, the slashing is top notch. So if you're looking for gore, this has gore, but it also has humor too, funnily enough. So yes, you're emotionally invested in these characters, but there's also some humor thrown in, like lots of funny dialogue because some of the characters are high while they're in this Halloween carnival. So a lot of funny things take place because of that. And it's just a wonderful story. I think it's very unique. And look at this cover. I mean, that's another reason to pick this up because it's just the most beautiful cover ever in terms of a cool, spooky, atmospheric cover. Cotton candy skull, bitch, how can you go wrong? Next up, a book I'm very, very fond of. This is Clowns vs. Spiders, and it's actually one of my favorite reads of 2022. I read this back in February, and I have not stopped thinking about it since. This is by Jeff Strand, and Jeff Strand does a really good job at 
infusing humor into his stories and he does this mostly through the character's dialogue and this one is kind of an absurdist comedy but there's plenty of horror elements in this as well and you might guess from the title this story centers around a group of clowns facing a whole bunch of spiders and hilarity ensues but also really gory things ensue and lots of action. So this reminds me of a fun horror movie, the type of thing you would sit down to watch around Halloween time that you don't have to take too seriously. It's got the feel that you want for the season, but at the same time it has that lightness that you can still enjoy. So essentially we're following a group of clowns who get kicked out of the circus they're working for because the people at the circus say no one cares about clowns anymore get out of here we don't need you so the clowns have to go and find a job at a haunted attraction and they have to find a job being non-funny clowns they have to be scary clowns and they're all very upset about this they feel like they're betraying the clown code and here's where some of the humor comes in obviously in real life people who portray clowns don't think and talk like this, but the characters in this book do. They act like a clown code is a serious thing, they act like being a clown is prestigious, and they hate that they have to portray a scary clown, or scary clowns, I should say, plural, and they have to continue to give clowns a bad name by making people think clowns are something to be scared of. So I just think that's wonderful in and of itself, but the reason I'm picking this as a suggestion for Halloween time is because it does take place, at least parts of it, at a haunted attraction, so that's kind of cool. But like I said, it kind of reminds me of a movie, specifically think Eight-Legged Freaks, but with clowns <laughs> instead of like David Arquette. So it's got that, you know, horror vibe, but plenty of humor, and it's even better, I think, because, like, clowns are involved, and these are definitely not scary clowns, but they're fun clowns, and yeah, this is just a wild ride, and I think anyone could enjoy this, especially during Halloween time. Next up, The Exorcist by William Peter Blatty. Of course, this has nothing to do with Halloween. However, this is a classic. I highly recommend it. It's one of my favorite books of all time. I have long been a fan of the film, and the film, I mean, I saw when I was a teenager and it scared the bejesus out of me. I was so freaked out the first time I ever saw it. I could barely get to sleep. I was at a sleepover. I was huddled around my friends that night while we were trying to get to bed. I was just freaked out. And they weren't paying attention to them during the movie, so they were just fine. And I was like, what the hell? Why am I the only one freaked out? It's because I was so engrossed in the film. So fast forward many years later, I finally decided to pick up the book and do a fun comparison and contrast. And I think if you love the film, this gives you a little bit extra background information. And I just think it's one of the ultimate scary books to read for Halloween time. So you can't go wrong. It's just something, once again, to use the word, it's a classic that has stood the test of time. And I think that's for a very good reason, because it's an effective novel and it's a well-written novel. And it's something that a lot of other novels that came afterwards takes a lot of things from, inspiration. So I highly suggest it because I do think this is something where both the film and the book have really great elements to them, and the book just helps give you a little bit more information about the whole story, while still really not being too too different from the movie at the same time. Plus, if you want to do a whole thematic reading and viewing pairing, you can watch the movie after reading the book or vice versa. And I think that would make for a very eventful night or a couple of nights in October. So yeah, definitely try to pick this up if you haven't already read it. Here is another book that doesn't really have anything to do with Halloween, but the vibe of this book is perfect for spooky season. This is Book of the Damned by D.A. Fowler. This is a vintage horror book, originally published back in the 90s. However, this edition is the new edition published by Capricorn Literary. They are a publishing company that makes sure that old school vintage horror gets republished in new editions, not just paperback editions, but a lot of time audiobook editions, as well as e-copies, like Kindle copies. So if you're interested in this, you can find a newer copy, although it, you know, the old school version, the original 90s published version is out of print. This 
is a fun, zany, weird, crazy, bleak book. That's a lot of adjectives, but it's all of those things at once somehow. So essentially this book, the very, very loose premise is it's a book about a book, but really it's about so much more. There's some really disgusting gross things in this book in terms of there's like a body part that's used as a laser. A penis. Anyway, ignore that, but if you can handle like zany gross stuff, then you're good to go. But it also has serious freak out horror too, like stuff that's legit scary and off-putting and some gory scenes as well. So it's not just gross out horror, it's like actual legit, oh, this is freaking me out horror too. And so there's humor in here as well, but I would really say it's more of the dark kind of humor, like uh, very, um, very heavy humor, uh, almost like a black comedy. So it's got that, but it also has a, a bleakness to it. So it, it's got all of these elements and somehow you wouldn't think it all works together, but it does. So the ending is super, super dark and the whole thing, it's actually quite fascinating and the whole time you're wondering what's going on, what's going to happen. Uh, the basic premise, like I said, just to kind of go a little bit deeper and explain a little bit further. Yes, it's a book about a book. So this girl picks up a book from the library. It's called Book of the Damned. After she's done reading it, she starts to see visions and she's like, what am I experiencing? She's almost thinking she's getting glimpses into another person's life. But then she realizes, wait a minute, this is like the book I read a couple of weeks ago. So it's like she's seen scenes from the book and she's almost like living out the scenes in her mind. Like she's experiencing the pain from the scenes from the book she read. And she's just going through all this torture that was depicted in the book she read. And then there's a larger mystery around why that is happening. Like, why are people experiencing this in real life after reading just a book? So I think it's kind of cool. And there's like a meta element to it because you are reading a book about a book that people have read that are, that's like messing them up. So I just think that's very cool. And uh, it's a very layered experience. And it really just feels like it'd be a fun read and an interesting read and a read that m people wouldn't necessarily think to read in October, but I personally think it would fit. Next up, The Last Night of October by Greg Chapman. I read this last year. This is a short little novella, super quick and easy. You can get this done in one sitting. This is really morose. It's got a heaviness to it, but lots of imagery as well. And we're also trying to figure out a mystery. So there's this old man and every Halloween, something from his past comes back to haunt him and he spends every Halloween locked up in his house trying to avoid coming in contact with this thing from his past that is haunting him. But one night a nurse comes over to stay with him and it's not his usual nurse and so things go haywire and he's really feeling like he might not be able to avoid this thing that he's successfully avoided for so long and things unfold and we learn more about what he's avoiding and why and the whole story behind it. So yeah, this is really good. Hardly anyone talks about it and this cover's really cool too, by the way. So yes, I highly suggest this. It totally fits with October because it takes place on Halloween. Next up, I'm gonna talk about two books that are great fall reads. So if you want some books that are not necessarily set during Halloween or on Halloween, but you want something that has a fall vibe where it talks about autumn and the specific weather that, you know, we all associate with spooky season, then this one in particular has you covered, Harvest Home. It's about a couple and their kid who, they're from the city and they move to this very small remote town. This town's kind of odd though, and they like everyone, even outsiders who come and move in, to abide by their customs customs and their traditions and part of those customs and traditions has to do with appeasing mother earth so that they can ensure a good and successful corn harvest every year so they've got these specific ceremonies and like i said traditions that they adhere to and do all year long to ensure this plentiful harvest and so as you can imagine things don't really go so well for the city couple trying to fit in with this small town. And there's more to these ceremonies than meets the eye. Some people might say that the ending is predict predictable for this, but this is an old school book that kind of helped establish the folk horror subgenre of 
of horror. So I think that this is so worth reading. The writing is beautiful and there's so many passages and sentences about the weather, about fall time, about just, you know, how outside looks and feels around this small town. It's going to make you want to live and move to New England, even with all the crazy stuff and the ceremonies that might seem odd to you. The descriptions of the weather will make you want to live up there if you don't already. I know reading this I was like damn it I want to move I want to move to the New England area. So yeah I say this is totally appropriate for fall time. Next up a true classic Something Wicked This Way Comes. This is the other book I said I wanted to recommend. This one just oozes fall vibes. This is by Ray Bradbury of course that's what makes it a classic because you could pretty much call Ray Bradbury Mr. October or Mr. Halloween because a lot of his books, you know, he does write about sci-fi quite a bit, especially if you're familiar with books like Fahrenheit 451. However, in a, quite a few of his other books that are a little bit less known but still somewhat popular, he writes about fall time and October specifically. And Something Wicked This Way Comes fits into that category and this takes place during fall time and there's a kind of a dark carnival coming to town and these two kids are exploring this carnival but they witness something they're not really supposed to witness at this carnival and then they have to spend time hiding away from the guy who runs this carnival and he's really really creepy this just oozes like i said the vibes you're looking for during fall time and not only is this a great book to read but if you're into reading a book and then watching the accompanying film adaptation this was made into a movie by Walt Disney, and it's one of my favorite film adaptions of a book ever. Oh my god, the movie is so good. The movie is fantastic. I rewatched it last year. It is like one of the most perfect fall time movies, and it's so, it's just so faithful to the book, but it, it, it's so easily watchable because I will say the one thing with the book is I would totally recommend the audiobook version because Ray Bradbury he writes so beautifully but at the same time there are a lot of very flower flower I can't even say this word right of course so of course I'm not eloquent like Bradbury but there's all these flowery sentences and passages and very very big words and I, I do think that this is a wonderful beautiful read but at the same time it could be kind of a hard difficult read because it feels like you're reading a classic into it's you know kind of written where it's not as easy to digest and so with that being said I listened to this on audio as I read along physically and that really helped and that's how I suggest if you're worried about reading a classic I suggest using the audiobook and plus the audiobook was really well done great narrator and then watch the adaptation if you haven't seen it you might have to to buy the DVD because as of last year it wasn't streaming anywhere but it's such a good movie you won't mind having it in your collection for future fall times and future Halloweens. This might be the perfect book out of all these books to read during Halloween time or even late September time because it's also fall centric. Autumn Crow by Cameron Chaney. If Cameron Chaney sounds familiar to you, it's probably because he is a wonderful booktuber. So he's not just an author, but he's also got, like I said, this wonderful booktube channel, and the channel is called Library Macabre. He's on a very short hiatus right now, but he will be coming back with some awesome content very soon. And he's still very active on Patreon where he's updating us all on what he's doing and how he's getting ready to relaunch his channel. And he's also working on a new book called Autumn Crow High. It's going to be a series and it's going to be the first book in the series. So I'm so pumped for that. It should be ready soon. And I will definitely be digging into that. But while you guys wait, if you have not already checked out Autumn Crow, do yourself a favor and check it out. This is a short story collection. And short story collections aren't always my favorite. But the thing about Autumn Crow that makes it special is that all these short stories connect to one another. And I love that because it makes this collection very fluid. Like it, it really just meshes together perfectly. It makes it feel like it's not a whole bunch of unrelated things. So... All these short stories take place in a fictional town where it's Halloween all the time. The town is called Autumn Crow, hence the name of the book. So I just love that this town connects all the stories together and that each story references other stories in this collection. 
masterfully done and look at this cover honestly how can you go wrong with this doesn't this scream halloween and fall yes 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 and to me i was just talking about something wicked this way comes i feel like this has a lot of the same elements as something wicked this way comes it's got horror but it's also got some sadness and some melancholiness while you're reading because i feel like sometimes uh things that we associate with Halloween can be a little bit nostalgic, a little bit sad. It's like looking back on your childhood, looking back on a feeling that you can't quite recapture anymore. Autumn Crow has that feeling in some of the stories, whereas other stories in the collection have a really like punch to them where they legit scare you and freak you out. So it's really got everything. It's an adult collection. It's not for kids. It's wonderfully written. The thing that really reminds me of Ray Bradbury is that it's got some elegant and very sophisticated writing, but it's easily digestible. That's the big difference. Whereas Bradbury, you need the audiobook, at least in my opinion, I needed the audiobook to kind of digest some of the writing. Autumn Crow, it's beautifully written, but it's easy to read, easy to get into. So that is the difference, but uh, it's still got those same Bradbury vibes. Okay, so the last of my adult suggestions for reads for Spooky Season, they're both by Stephen King. First up, I will talk about the one that doesn't really have to do with Halloween. This is just a wonderful story. It's Pet Cemetery, of course, and I read this for the first time earlier this year. Look at all the tabs I marked. So yes, I enjoyed it. It was awesome, and I also recommend the audiobook for this because this is narrated by Michael C. Hall, aka the guy who plays Dexter, and he does an incredible job. It's one of the best audiobooks I have ever listened to. So good. Highly recommend. And I just feel like this story feels like it's perfect for October. Even though it's not necessarily set in that time of year, it just feels right. And next, the other Stephen King book, Cycle of the Werewolf. This is so cool. This has some wonderful illustrations. This takes place over a whole year, starting in January, and it goes through October, of course, and that's one of the reasons why I'm suggesting you should read it, because although it goes through all the other holidays and months as well, I just feel like you can't go wrong with reading about a werewolf in Halloween time, or during Halloween time, I should say, and look at the page for October. There's wonderful illustrations all throughout this book. So yes, look at this carcass here, and the leaves and the trees, and yeah, it's just fantastic. And like I said, you can't go wrong. And then you've got September, also gives you fall vibes here with this field. Yeah. And the whole thing's just, the illustrations for the whole thing's wonderful. And it's just very entertaining, quick and easy. You could read this in a sitting or two. And there is a film adaptation that is so much fun. Gary Busey's in it. And it's just, there's this one part where he's getting tossed around. Oh my God, it made me laugh so hard. Uh, it's one of those horror movies that you could watch for fun. But there's some seriousness to it too. But it's just that, you know, the effects are a little dated now. But um, it's still a great adaptation. And I highly recommend it for a good time during Halloween time. So yes, Silver Bullet is the movie, Cycle of the Werewolf is the book, and you can't go wrong with either. Next up, I have a couple middle grade reads to suggest to you guys. If any of you guys are fans of reading, you know, middle grade or young adult type of books, I think these will be up your alley if you haven't already read them. I will circle back around and suggest one or two more adult things at the end. So don't tune out if you don't like middle grade. I will put a timestamp below when I start talking about adult reads again. All right, first up, Ray Bradbury, another book by him, The Halloween Tree. And although this is a middle grade read, it's actually another read of his that is kind of heavy in terms of the language, but it is beautiful. There is specifically two pages that talk about when these group of kids see the Halloween tree. And it's like, the most beautiful thing I've ever read ever. It it describes pumpkins on the trees and the lights of the trees and oh it's wonderful. I actually read it out loud and decorated my Halloween tree for a Halloween special on the YouTube channel Harpies in the Trees. She had a whole big collaboration last year and that's what I did for her collaboration and lots of other people did some fun stuff too. I will link that video below if you're curious about my passage that I read from the Halloween tree as well as what everyone else did in honor of Halloween. But yes, you cannot go wrong if you haven't already read this. Pick it up now. And even better, there is also a film adaptation to go with this. And it's 
animated and it's beautiful. Oh, it's wonderful. I'm rewatching it this year and I'm so excited. And even better, the movie narrator is Ray Bradbury. So you've got to check out the film if you've already read the book and haven't seen the animated movie. Go and check it out. Next up, I cannot mention middle grade suggestions for Halloween without mentioning The Haunted Mask by R.L. Stein, a classic Goosebumps read, one that I have always loved the idea of, but I didn't really read this till this year, which is crazy. It's almost sacrilege. I, I don't even know because I'm a big Goosebumps fan. And also I have watched the movie adaptation or the show adaptation. They made it into like a movie special back in the 90s. But this is from this bookmark is the mask from the movie adaptation. And I've watched that many times since I was a kid, but I had never really read the book till this year. And the book matches up to the vibes of the Goosebumps show special. And I would say that if you've not read the book. It's perfect to read for Halloween because it takes place on Halloween. It, it's got great messaging. If you have kids and you want them to read something that's thematic for the season, you can't go wrong. Or if you're just an adult who's a kid at heart, you can't go wrong with this either if you haven't already picked it up. Next up, a middle grade book series that I'm a big fan of, Monster Street by J.H. Reynolds. He is so nice, by the way. He is a wonderful author. But the coolest part is he obviously loves and treasures Halloween because he's got more than one Monster Street book, as you could see here, but he's got even more than this. He's got four that I own right now, and two out of the four take place around Halloween time. So he obviously loves Halloween. So first up, I'm going to suggest The Halloweeners, which is this one, and then Carnival. So if you like carnivals in your horror, then you can't go wrong with Carnival. It's about these two brothers who go to visit their aunt and they go to this carnival, but this carnival is kind of sinister. And even though there's all this fun Halloween related stuff at the carnival, there's some like some bad stuff there that the kids shouldn't be getting into and like I said there's more than meets the eye and they should watch out because things unfold and these brothers have to go against people at this carnival and then finally like I said I mentioned the Halloweeners this one's got some emotion in it in fact it made me cry when I read it because there's one scene where one of the kids moms discovers something and it's a huge relief to her and it's just very sad and very emotional and very relatable. Just the whole idea of someone going through what she went through during a scene in this book. It's oh, so heart-wrenching, but really awesome. And I just love this book. Uh, all these kids, they actually turn into what they're wearing for their costume. So that kind of gives you a Buffy vibe because there's a Buffy the Vampire Slayer episode like that where, you know, the Scoobies, they're wearing costumes and people start to turn into them. Same thing happens here. And the kids who turn into the monsters have to figure out how to turn back into kids. And so that's the essential premise. It's so cute. But again, like I said, you got to be into reading middle grade if you're an adult wanting to check this out just know you know it's not meant for adults it's meant for kids but I think if you're a kid at heart you could still enjoy them or if you have kids of your own they would truly love these for sure two more spooky thematic middle grade reads that I would suggest Spine Shiffers by J.A. Dark and this one is so spooky it's about a clown and this cousin is babysitting his cousin, that's redundant, whatever. This little, this bigger cousin is babysitting his little cousin and his aunt has all these clown dolls in her room. So they see this life-size clown doll in the aunt's room and they think it's just another one of her dolls, but it's super creepy and it's life-size. Come to find out, they start to suspect that it's actually an escaped person from, I think, a mental ward. I can't remember. All I remember was it really did freak me out, even though it's meant for middle grader, middle graders. It still was really effective and ended up spooking me. I just think it's got great vibes and it'd be perfect to read for Halloween time because it truly was eerie and creepy. And look at this cover. It's one of the best middle grade covers I've ever seen. I love it. And another middle grade read. This is part of a series as well. Don't be scared. This one's the hide and seek house. And it's just a really cool setting for a spooky themed book. These kids, they're playing hide and seek in a cemetery. And they stumble upon this abandoned old school house with all these secret rooms. And it's a perfect place for hide and seek. And really the setting more than the story or the vibes really is what 
lends me to want to suggest this book to you because it was such a cool setting the idea of like a whole big house with these insane rooms and finally a middle grade read that's not necessarily horror or overly spooky but it's definitely thematic because although this begins in summer it actually takes place, the main action of the story, the bulk of the action, takes place over Halloween weekend and a lot of it also on Halloween. We're following our main character, Tommy, and this is Tommy and the Order of Cosmic Champions, and it's got some sci-fi and fantasy elements sprinkled in, and... I say sci-fi because the main character, Tommy, he's obsessed with this TV show, The Order of Cosmic Champions, and it's also a comic book. And so he really loves this comic book, and he loves the cartoon, and he's obsessed with the characters, and he starts to imagine these characters are real. Or is it just his imagination? That's part of the question. And another part of it is, it's a coming-of-age story. Tommy is bullied, and that part's super relatable and very sad. And so Tommy is dealing with the bullying, he's dealing with his parents getting a divorce, and how can he, you know, come into his own? How can he overcome these obstacles and be more confident in who he is? And that's kind of like the journey we go on. But like I said, the bulk of the journey is on Halloween weekend, and you get descriptions of autumn and fall, and this is actually not out yet. The author, Anthony Rapino, gave me an advanced reading copy. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was very fun. And if you're not super into horror, or if you have a little one, middle grader, who doesn't really like horror, but still is looking for something that has like a little bit of autumn vibes, this has you covered. And it's going to be coming out, like I said, in October. So it'll be out officially soon. You can pre-order it now on Amazon. And quickly, let me just show you how beautiful the hardcover is without the dust jacket on. It's a beautiful purple book. But look at this. Look at this wonderful silver font. It's just pretty to look at in terms of the beautiful hardcover and the artwork on the dust jacket itself. Just really well designed and blurbed by a lot of old school 80s stars like Joey Lawrence blurbed this and a whole bunch of cool people. So I just think that's really cool. Corey Feldman blurbed this and he actually I think did like a YouTube review of it. So how cool is that? And speaking of comic books, I'm going to circle back to more adult type of reads. Here is something a little bit different, something that's not really just set on Halloween, but still is very dark, and the flippin' imagery in this graphic novel is incredible. So this is Batman the Long Halloween. This I read years ago. It's so good. So this is another one, much like Cycle of the Werewolf. What happens is it goes through all of the holidays. So yes, Valentine's Day. I mean, I think it even had like an obscure holiday. What was it even called? I can't even remember. It was like was it Arbor Day? I can't remember. It was some weird holiday. I was like, what is that represented in here? But there is a Halloween section and the flippin' illustrations in here are just to die for. Like, they are so amazing. Let me just show you the pumpkin. This is probably my favorite. Now, this is the graphic novel where all the issues are together of the story. And the story, it's a very dark Batman story. It's very, but look at this. Look how wonderful this is. I would never get a tattoo because I just, no, I don't know. I, no. But if I ever did, how cool would this be as a tattoo? Amazing. So really neat. And it's just a great story. If you like Batman and have never read this, you should totally read it. It's basically the origin story of Two-Face. All right, just a few more suggestions. So I did want to shout out my current favorite author, who's a new favorite, but has quickly become like my all-time favorite very 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 fast and quick so that is Robert McCammon and the first book I ever read by Robert McCammon was Boy's Life which is not a horror book but it is a wonderful coming-of-age story that is not my suggestion for fall time though I will suggest so McCammon has been traditionally a little bit hard on his first four published books and that includes his very first published book Ball and that's spelled B-A-A-L I actually read that last month and I was really surprised by how much I enjoyed it. After having heard that he's not a huge fan of it himself and that other people were like, you know, his first four books aren't up to the standards of his later work, which is true. Ball isn't perfect, but Ball is great if you like a spooky audiobook. So I read along on Kindle as I listened to the audiobook for Ball by Robert McCammon 
and there are these parts where Ball is speaking in this really creepy voice and it is scary. Like the narrator does an amazing job and he narrates more than one McCammon book. I have listened to, I think, I'm on my third book narrated by this audiobook narrator. I think his name is Ray, I can't remember, but he is fantastic and the way he narrates Ball is incredible. So if you're interested in reading through Robert McCammon's work and you've heard bad things about his first novel, I'm here to say that I actually enjoyed it and I thought it was a great debut novel for someone back when he was 20 years old, like 20 somewhat years old, to have written this novel. It's pretty great and you can see glimpses of later awesome McCammon like boys life McCammon it's not all there fleshed out but the sparkle is there so that's my first Robert McCammon suggestion it doesn't take place during Halloween but there's like a demon type of element to it where it just seems appropriate for spooky season so the second Robert McCammon suggestion is a book I'm currently reading, so I don't know how it's going to turn out, but it is set in October, and that's why I'm going to mention it. So They Thirst, which is another one of his first four published books, which he's not, like, the hugest fan of, so it's not up to the standards of his later work, apparently, but I'm really enjoying it so far, you know... I do think it's very character and story driven versus like horror heavy. Um, so, you know, if you're expecting like a bloodbath, you might be disappointed, but it definitely has some spooky vibes and I can't wait to see how it plays out. And there's literally like where it says like October 27th is one of the parts of the book. So it's literally taking place in October during parts of the book, which I find really cool and fascinating. All right, next up a book I haven't read. The only book on this list I haven't read but I have a good feeling about it, and that is why I am shouting it out. This is on my TBR for late September. So after the first day of fall, September 22nd, I am going to start reading this, When Halloween Was Green by Bernard K. Finnegan. And this has an Irish flair to it. So essentially the monsters and spirits of, you know, Celtic lore, of Celtic old, they are getting upset that Halloween has become cutified. I don't even know how to, like, what else to say, what other word. You know, it's become sweet and fun and all about candy and silly costumes. And, you know, the whole idea of Halloween was to ward off spirits and there were certain traditions and those have been lost. And so there are creatures and monsters from Celtic, I'm sorry, Celtic, I always get it wrong because I'm a fan of the Celtic, so I say Celtics when it's supposed to be Celtic. So there are like things from Celtic past that are coming to, you know, wreak havoc and basically be like, bitch, you gotta go back to the way Halloween was. So yes, when Halloween was green, I am so excited for this book. It is a chunker, but I have a great feeling about it. And I don't think a lot of people know about this. I didn't know about it. I just happened to have researched Irish horror books and this came up and I said when well, Halloween was green this seems like it'd be perfect for Halloween and yeah I cannot wait to actually see what I think about it you guys will find out but yeah check it out if you're interested I think it could be a great read last suggestion and last but not least this is a non-fiction book this is pumpkin cinema the best movies for Halloween and it's by my friend Nathaniel Toll and I actually read this before he became my friend he actually became my friend because of this book I actually tweeted something at him and then we like started talking on Twitter and stuff and now I consider him like one of my favorite friends my one of my favorite online friends for sure he's just such a sweetheart and a really cool person and loves horror movies and that's what this book is all about and I actually use this book that's why it's tabbed to help plan my horror movie Halloween marathons. So Nathaniel has certain criteria that he lays out in the front of the book and he talks about all the movies he puts in this book are movies that would fit with fall vibes. There's no snow in any of these movies uh, in terms of like the whole thing's not set in winter. There might be a part that's set in winter, but yeah. So he's got like strict criteria that he used to decide what should be put in and what should be left out. Now, I will say some of the movies you might have already heard of, there are some popular movies in here. The Exorcist is in here. Just movies you'd be familiar with. But there's also some some little known gems that you might not have heard of. And that's what I think this is wonderful for. And even more, even if you've heard of every single movie, say you're a horror buff and you already know about every horror movie to watch during Halloween time. I think one of the best parts is in the back of the book where he gives 
TV show episode suggestions for Halloween. So Halloween themed TV show episodes and why they're good. So I think that's worth it alone. He also has like little like shorts at the end. Like he talks about the skeleton dance, which is a Disney short. Um, and yeah, just in each, it's got beautiful fo fo photographs, colored photographs here. And he talks about why he included the movie on his list and gives you a little synopsis and he gives you all of this like the rating the director and some production information so it's just so well researched and even if you know every single movie in here it's still worth picking up I mean the cover is cute as hell alone but the pictures are awesome and the back of the book is really fun too so I even love how at the very very back of the book he has like almost like a summary uh, of top five lists where he goes through and it's all of the not all but there's a lot of you know movies he mentioned throughout the book but he puts them in categories here at the end if you want ghosts if you want a haunted house if you want to laugh uh, these are great movies for Halloween parties. If you want vampires, if you want zombies, if you want a romantic setting, if you want outer space, if you want a beautifully look, uh, beautifully, if you want a beautiful looking animated short, if you want pets that turn to the dark side. So he's got like a lot here that I just think is wonderful. And yeah, you can't go wrong supporting a good person. And Nathan definitely is a wonderful, awesome person. And this book doesn't get talked about enough. So Pumpkin Cinema, I randomly found it at Barnes & Noble many years ago, and I'm so glad I did because I love looking at it. It's like what kind of kicks off getting ready for spooky season for me. I pick up this book, look through it, and I'm like, hmm, what should I start preparing? Even if I've seen the movie, a lot of times this will remind me of movies that like I wanna rewatch again. So yeah, it can be used for a whole multitude of different reasons and it's fun to just read through and flip through at any time and a great coffee table book too all right guys so that that is my list of suggestions i hope you guys enjoyed it i know some of this is very well known books but i just wanted to give a custom list that i don't know I, i've never done that before and the more i get into reading because i'm a newer reader the more i'll have for suggestions in future years because i definitely want to do this again as my reading gets more diverse and as i read more and more halloween and spooky season thematic books i will have more to tell you guys about so yes yeah, stay tuned for next year who knows i might have a lot more to talk about by then for this time though that is it for me guys Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate you. Sorry for the stumbles. I blame COVID. <laughs> but I still wanted to record this regardless. Anyway, it was worth it. I love talking with you guys. Have you guys read any of these books? Comment below. What are some books you love to read during spooky season? I want to know. Your opinions are what makes things so much better. I love it when I can have a conversation with you guys and it's not just one side. It's not just me. All right. As I said, though, for this time, that is it for me. Till next time, you guys know what you can do. Keep on killing it. Bye, guys.